2500 years ago, a manual was written for emperors and generals, Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Today, it's literally the most influential book on leadership with almost a cult-like following. I'm starting a new series called The Book Club where each week I'll pick one book and extract all of the information and present it here in 10 minutes. So, what better book to start with than the OG self-help text The Art of War? So, I thought I'll see for myself if a text written 2000 years back is still applicable to us today. And as it turns out, a good idea never gets old. Now, a good chunk of the book has been written in the context of ancient war-ridden China. So, I'm only going to extract the parts that are applicable to us today. And believe me, there's a lot to learn here. The teachings of this book can be applied to almost any situation: business, sports, your private life, parenting, and any situation in which you may face tensions, competition, or conflict. But of course, if you wish to read the book in its full glory or gift it to somebody who you think will need it, you can always purchase it from the link in the description down below. Part one: the context. Sun Tzu was a general, a military strategist, and a writer in fifth century China. At this time, China was divided into many states that were constantly in a state of war with each other. Sun Tzu was an advisor for one of the states, and he won a lot of battles. So, yes, this is a book on war, but it also talks about ideas that don't have to do anything with actual fighting. It talks about the war off the battlefield that gives you an upper hand. The book is divided into thirteen chapters, and it's organized very well into bullet points. The underlying theme is to pick your battles. and that a war is best won without fighting at all as you might imagine this is what makes the book especially applicable to us even in today's world now a chunk of the book deals with using the landscape of the battle or using army specific resources but if you're interested in the history of war tactics this video isn't for you i'm only going to focus on the parts of the book that the readers today can benefit out of but for completeness sake i'll just put the contents of all the chapters on the screen for you to pause and have a look at part 2 using information Sun Tzu was a master of soft power he preferred to win wars without having to send anyone to the battlefield but if fighting was necessary he always picked the easy battles first according to him the best way to win these easy battles was to have insider information for that time it meant engaging in psychological warfare and spying but in today's competitive spheres it means to have channels to keep a tab on your competition's advantages and disadvantages That could mean something as simple as using the internet for reviews or even having some networks that give you some inside information about them. Then it is easy for you to conserve your resources and excel in areas where competition is lagging or has no chance of catching up. Apple the tech giant used this very advice with its think different campaign. Their aim wasn't to compete with others in pre-established fields but to set up a new game for themselves. It was this strategy that led to the success of Apple's iPod, iPad and iWatch. Spotify noticed Spotify spotted Spotify spotted that music platforms were not ready to host audiobooks audiobook platforms were not ready to host podcasts and so on so instead of aiming to be the best in any one of these categories they aimed to become the one stop shop for all things audio the hope was that every time customers were not sure where to look for something they would turn to them Today you can find almost any audio product you can think of on Spotify and they have become the go-to platform for everything audio as predicted. So, here's the first step to avoiding war. Start a completely new field or one where you know there's very little competition. Think outside the box and target the disadvantages of your competitors. Part 3, focus on speed. Sun Tzu loved espionage and we talked about data, market research and business intelligence as parallels today. And while it's important to know your enemies, it's just as important to know yourself. You could try exploiting your enemies' weaknesses all you want, but if the same things are a weakness for your team and your company as well, then there's not much value you can extract out of that intel. So before you make a move, it's important that you understand your capacity, strengths and weaknesses and know all the potential follow-ups. Think about all your resources and skills and when you deliver the blow deliver it as swiftly as you can sun tzu says that speed is the essence of war you have to take advantage of your enemy's unpreparedness and strike at an unexpected point at an unexpected time the quicker you are in these cases the more chances of success and that's why it's important to know yourself to be able to make quick decisions in short spans of time let's say your competition is dealing with a pr crisis and you're working on an update that could give you an edge This is the time to strike. Try moving up your launch date at the price of some features to knock your competition even more off balance. Identify your moment and seize it. Part 4: Be a good leader. Sun Tzu popularized the idea 
that a good leader leads by example, not force. And to be a good leader, you need to have five qualities. One, experience. It's hard to lead by example if you have little experience in what you want your team to do. Also, if you have experience, it'll help you make good decisions. Two, foresight. It doesn't matter if you're talking about high stakes competition or workplace quality. A good leader must be able to anticipate what's coming down the road and come up with plans of action very quickly. Three, soft skills. A leader should have compassion for the followers and the ability to show it truthfully. According to Sun Tzu, a leader must act with integrity, be kind, and practice empathy. Four, discipline. Only individuals with self-control, strictness, and discipline can inspire the followers to emulate the same. Five, trust. It's important for a leader to hold their team to a high standard and trust that they'll achieve it. To facilitate this, a system based on rewards and discipline can be implemented. Overall, The Art of War by Sun Tzu points out that not every war needs to end in battle. Instead, it's much wiser to avoid war altogether by getting information on your competition, thinking outside the box, and creating your own playing field. Most victories arise from meticulous preparation. If you're well prepared, you can strike fast when the opportunity presents itself. And remember, speed is of the essence. In terms of being a good leader, make sure you're kind yet strict, rely on your experience and be disciplined. When you lead by example, you'll be sure to gain the loyalty of your team.